and we go to each part a bit earlier than expected, which is then going to be adapted. Uh, two comments for speakers. Try to let them talk five minutes before the other time starts, so to ask to leave some more for a few questions. Series, each of the conference, a Swiss Club team member, which is the moderator, to help with question time and to make sure also you finish on time. Today is Christian, Christian is sitting here. If you can clap, just stand up, Christian. So, Christian will be the moderator today. And you will have in front of you a small digital clock with the time just ticking by. You have to hurry up, I see. And when it's over, it rings. And so, the moderator will then make his best effort to carry out. I mean, to, to take you off the uh, podium. You can either set your s s s timer to 25 minutes so that you basically stop and have a 5 minute question. If you set it to 30 minutes, if you tell that you set it to 30 minutes, then basically once it's over, there won't be time for questions, which is a little bit sad. Second thing, you can use the podium microphones or you can use the mic, so it's also a laptop mic that so you can put on your pocket. And so, uh, so as the second thing on the presentation is since that's not the latest version. There is also you can use, so the best thing is if you want to comment on something in the presentation is to use the mouse. Because like this, as this video is recorded on the on DVD, I mean you will be seeing what if you use a laser pointer, so if you point on one screen, and if it's not the one which will be recorded, what you point out is not very good to be seen. What is the mouse? I mean, uh, uh, cursor can be seen everywhere. Now, last thing before I start to move on my talk, we got a few days ago a nice email by Sono Pongo, of you know him, he's the uh, director of the automatic group by ACGE Trieste, where he basically wishes us a wonderful conference, but not only that, we will start the music, please. He has written the song.
actual seeds, but don't worry, don't panic. We're not going to discuss about all of those different logos and organizations. So, this is not going to be a talk of the prehistory of Swiss Cross. It's not going to be a talk of what happened during the last few years, but more taking things where we were, where we are now, and where we want to go. Not completely, because it's not possible to do this in the time which is allotted, but try to find, to discuss a number of important things around Swiss Cross. So first, there's something important, it's what is the universe in which it's called evolves? If you remember, in 1953, the first sequence of Roman history was obtained. 86, we had about 4,000 sequences, that's when Swiss Cross started. Now if you take Swiss Cross and Tremble, there is about 3.5 million sequences. But, okay, 3.5 million, where will it stop? The answer is basically, 179,025,042 entries. Now, I mean, there is some calculation behind this number, it's not a random number. So, why 179 million protein sequence entries? First estimate is that there is about 30 million species in a wild sphere. Only 1.5 million have been named. But we know that there is such a number of naming of microbials, uh, microbials, insect world, that people give estimate between 15 to 50 million species, actually 30 million species, as my grandma. Second estimate is that if there are about 20 million bacteria, there are 5 million proteins, 3 million insects, and so on, which are approximately the numbers in each of those species, then it's easy, the combination is the following. You just multiply the number of species by the number of genes, and you add 225,000 for pregnancies per kilo, and 42 to the number of cells, and you add that, and you add up to 179 million entries. It's not the number of different proteins in the last year, because of course, many proteins will be identical to species, but you know that now Swiss growth is, as in fact, one entry. Species. So even if two protein are identical in two species, we have two entries. So this is the number of entries that this crop actually will be contain when we are finished. So all of the pictures here, we still have more to do. When will it be complete? Swiss crops, we are now having you know, more than 220,000 entries. So 2009, 500,000 entries. We reached 1 million in 2030. For the fourth anniversary, 10 million, and 100 million in 2036. So we're not going to catch up like this. In travel, in May 2018, travel will have reached 10 million. I tried to compute this morning when we reached 179 million, but I said, well, I mean, if they didn't want to have a certain number, what they did, I mean, I don't know what they did, but it's an excel, and we just got the letter over it. But anyways, that's not really. I mean, useful as a date because using the same technique would have made this number one less. But knowing that using the same technique would accelerate the slow, it's probable that in less than 100 years, every organism would have been sequenced and we would have the gene and proteins of every organism in the with the technology that exists now. So that's interesting to take a track of. So, sequence. As we speak on sequence. This is, of course, the bread of Swiss world, and yes, sanitation as well. 99%, more than 99% of the sequence come, of course, from translation of mRNA or genetic sequence. So the question is do we need to manually to be in getting to sequence? I mean, they get into the area of gen bank, we have features, we can get them into travel, that's what happened. And we could future them intelligently and make a nice set of sequences and not have to model the sequence. And the question is, where do we get more protein? So what is the good state is? If you look at the number we do, 28,000 entries out of the 220,000 entries we spot have 82,000 sequence conflicts. In 2006 entry, we have to correct friction curves. And in 15,000 entries, we have to correct the initial size. 
what is C cell? Is this a tree growth slowly, a flat fiber, is this something else? And so on. This is a carbohydrate, is it a complex sugar, is it an animal sugar, is it a local sugar, and so on. All of this was missing. So what was the second phase? A complete overall and significant extension of the control of the of the PTS. A creation of a detailed annotation program with the super group at CMN the development of new tools internally to handle the prediction of ETFs, but will also need to expose a lot of external tools. And a massive cleanup and annotation of all the ETFs. In fact, we published a number of articles in the last three or four years with what we did with ETFs, like the supernatural participation sites, detection method, annotation of black and in Swiss world, annotation of ETFs in Swiss world, and so on. So, if you just look, you know, we have 283 description, excluding processing errors like this of the and this of the and reconciliation errors. We have a small part of this list, and we have a document which lists all the different ETFs with also the average mass difference and as well as the mass difference, which is important for mass spectrometry. So they need to rest it, which is developed uh, by John Garvey, which is happening, and in fact, it's basically the one which has covered up all of the chemical in the information and all of the identification of those PTM and the control calories. And all of this is available in the HTML format or in FTP by tablet in the format. Now, last thing about PTM, large scale experiments. Finally, Protein Man has arrived. This is an insight show for those who have the UPO meeting in Munich because not only not even a year ago in Munich, I was complaining that there is not enough large scale information coming out for ETFs. But now, in the last six months, this has tremendously changed. And we have added in the last 12 months 6,000 experimental ETFs coming from those large scale tables. Here is some title of the paper and acquisition side of human at that protein. Fossil protein of the little takes pain of a human. In the implementation side, and so on. So, what is the issue that I see in large scale experiments? So, I don't to deal with it because, first, is the issue of quality. You have to assess whether the methodology and really allows the detection of in vivo modification. Is it really there inside the cell? Is it not an artifact? How many false positives are expected? All of those which work in the protein field know that a mass spectrometry identification is subject to a lot of uncertainty if you don't have a statistical basis behind it. It's easy to run your favorite CRM analysis to get a result, but then is it good enough? So our tools, which are getting better and better at the heroes, at least one of them brings this, I mean, uh, this conference, but it's a problem because we still have false positives. And we need to know how much I expected by methodology. And how do we access the data? It's often in supplementary material. In uh, HTML, Excel spreadsheet, Word document, whatever you want. You can imagine everything. We are there. With a bug tail identity here, unique products, KB or KSA Sophie for us, NCBI, PID, or whatever the user has products that he wants or she wants to use. And we need to make some sanity checking. Is the right position modified? Which is not always the case. And does it make sense in biological context? And so I'm going to decide to propagate this information to those homology and they only to all of us. And Basically, this is all sorts of problems, and it's a big issue for the next years. How are we going to scale up? No, it's okay. We can take on this paper, download the supplementary material, get the information manually, try to access it, and so on. But it's obvious we cannot scale up like this. And of course, I mean, a project like Prime, which has been developed by EDI, where that whole group of mass spectrometry education are going to be, in fact, submitted. I are going to help in the sense that we some statistical information we will be able to filter according to experiment. 
but still there will be a lot of work to make sure the right is going. Third part, cross-reference. So DRI is a famous cross-reference. In your life, we're introducing it for the seven and it is three of these cross. Four of these cross. And the links is cross in the app, in the app, in the app. So it was very early in the songs now, uh, it's 90 years, more than 90 years that there was this cross reference. And in a way, they were instrumental to the development of the SMS, to the student of Patagos at the time, at the end of the Iceberg, who developed SRS because there was a case, otherwise they would not have developed SRS. And a number of years later, two, three years later, when Apple could start the development of XRASI because there were some links between this and the database. A lot of people have used SRS to this famous icon on SRS, and of course, if you look at it, everything is centered on the cross reference around this cross. Because that's the way SRS was built. And of course, XPASI was the same in 92. So those in the cross reference were very useful. But where are we now? We are linked to a lot of different databases. This is part of the distribution of six months. I won't go into details. It's a little bit of a link to cross reference. It's a file you get on the website. But if you look at the situation, we have now cross reference to 74 different databases. Pipeline. We have almost 3 million cross reference with an average of 12 per entry, so that's quite a lot. And we have other links in cross reference at your line. We have links to the taxonomy to the X line. We have links to PubMed and to DOI to the X line. We have web resource links in the CC web resource topic. And we have links at the level of ST line to the DDC database. So cross-reference are important, but they're not only need to have an aggregated resource, they also sometimes add information. You don't need an aggregated cross-reference, you can read and use information. For example, if you take Go, the gene ontology line in Swiss Prod gets you the information about the gene ontology classification of the vaccine. So not only can you go to Go with it, but you really see, okay, I want to choose the person which needs this annotation for Go of this protein. This is a nuclear protein, the important protein binding and the of production. So BDP cross reference, not only tell you such as a tree structure, say map to which shape and which residue in the sequence this tree structure is available. So this is information in addition to it. And of course, the cross reference to the domain database tells you the name of the domain, or at least the acronym of the domain, and the number of keys to the domain database. So you notice that we have 3 GM, uh, sorry, 3 GM, 3 TSP, 3 TSP1, 1 table 1 type C domain, immediately because of cross reference. Speaking of sequence to structure and cross reference, it's of course very important that there be efficient bidirectional links between Syscot and EDMST. So now, and it was exactly 10,000 entries last week of Syscot are linked to 20,000 EDM entries. It's, uh, so numbers are quite wrong. Well. It was 9,999, and now it's 10,000 exactly. I mean, it's just only 10,000 because it's an ability to 20,000 EDM. So we reach 10,000 protein sequence in Swiss code relates to EDD. And those things are constantly updated, the EDID MST groups, those are mapping, so the mapping gets back to Swiss code. Half of these numbers is not yet true. The links at the level of EDD back to EDD code can be Swiss code and travel are not updated always, and you cannot go back and forth really well. But in one way, yes. And of course, we use this information and the sanitation process, we have a monster, of course, on this aspect of things in the hall. But we're only not starting, I would say, to mine really some string structure to get information and add to side, additional people, and meta mining the side. So there's a lot of things which we still need to do to take into account the information which is available to this project. So, what is the future of cross reference? Will we really need our current cross reference in the future? Because you could say maybe we can replace 
say that by prohibiting us to fly the ACC reference several objects, why do we need to upload those things? Why can't we just ask a web service to do this? A little bit like the DAS system, which basically are the client server architecture. The problem is of course standardization. We still live in a tower of Babel. And of course it would be nice to say, I want to go into this genome database and retrieve all object related to this protein, accessing the gene name in the store. But we never show that the gene name we have is exactly the one that this database has now stored as its identity. So yes, making computer links is sometimes possible and we make computational links. What we call the implicit links on XPAS into about 30 different databases, but it's not the case that you can make links to a lot of resources directly and automatically. So that thing, this is something which we need really to be addressed. And of course, all of the different aspects of standardization I call, which lead me to the core parts control vocabulary and ontologies. Since the Rubik and the Swiss program have been putting a good set of control vocabulary, some of them have become almost ontologies. I have a three quotation mark or two, well, anyway, a no quotation mark on that, because knowing where control vocabulary starts from and who the ontology starts, they want to know some of the money you want to get. I mean, it's, I mean, if you see developing a control vocabulary, you will never get funded. If you believe the control vocabulary is ontology, whether or not it's a true ontology, you get more chance to be funded. <laughs> so, we have ontology, so if you're somebody here which you speak about a real ontology, what I say, my job, is that there are people which are related in ontology, not from vocabulary to ontology. And so, what we have in Swiss Prop are mostly control vocabulary. We're honest. So we have species, train, class B, journal, tissue, TM, domain name, and keywords. So keywords are so many ontology in Swiss Prop. Because the keywords have definition, have a hierarchy, have a number of things in it. So there's only ontology per se. All the rest are control vocabularies. We are very well advanced in the process of learning. So control vocabulary for hardways, we are all still of course there. And we have started the big problem of tackling the control vocabularies for protein names and gene. But of course this is not an easy task. So, first of all, do we need annotation? I know that you spend most of the time after the time in the field, a lot of time you spend learning sequence. But most of the time it's not spam working sequence and linking to cross-referencing data and so on. But it's to capture functional information. For example, what does this protein do? The role and function of this protein. What is the subtle location? Interaction. Tissue specificity, development of stage, input and disease. I mean all of you know all of those different topics, common topics in this product. Okay, a lot of people come up and say, and a lot of you here which use this for a lot, come up and say, oh, you can even have some text code, uh, Swiss code exists, but well, you already signed up with this song, with thanks to Swiss code, you know, many countries can do their work. But is this really true? I mean, is this really important? That's, I mean, a question to ask. I mean, because in fact, we spend so much time on it. Are we really, I mean, making a healthy community? It's a question we need to ask because. It's fair to all of us, to all of us running us, are we using the money in a way which is, I mean, what the user needs? Of course, the survey would help this also, of course, it's a small snapshot of all the people and bias to what people which know Swiss code and already came here, but still, it's useful to get away some information. But it's a question it's a time consuming process. We'll never be able to make a complete history score in terms of functional information. A lot of users want quick and easy answers. How many protein in human are in lipid metabolism so that can make those nice price pie charts, you know, saying that I have sequences and I do that 25% do this, 10% do this, and so on, and I can tell something also about my microarray and so on. The problem, the more you give details, the less it's easy to summarize because biology is not easy. I mean, it becomes a fractal problem. So, in fact, I mean, when we give a lot of information, people get this, ooh, my goodness, I better go and use this keyword or the group cross reference because then I can 
transform into a similar right alteration. And by painting also faster format syndrome, I don't know if uh uh is already here, it's a it's not your fault to be able to create it's a plastic format. It's perfect for what it's used for, sequence search and building a library of sequence to do fast and last. But the problem is anyone wants to grab everything they want with the protein, the day, the GPU, the way it is, inside the 75 character uh, line of the fast format, or sometimes longer. And this is crazy. I mean, basically, everything goes to blast, fast, and whatever you want, and everything has to be summarized with the fast header. And you end up having to spend, you spend a lot of time trying to think what fast header should we build that people have everything they want. It's impossible. People need to go back to that. So should we continue? Because so many people use the faster format and this is reports of sanitation. I think yes, for a lot of reasons. I start here two important reasons. We need automatized and automatic annotation to transfer knowledge from another organism to a known characterized one to one which is not well We are 30 million species in the last year, we let me to have 30 million modern organisms. Without many hundred of them, maybe a thousand of them, I don't know, but it's never going to be 30 million modern organisms. So we need to transfer the information from one organism to another one. And to be safe, and we have now a lot of experience with AMA on doing this, you really can be entries that are representative of the state of knowledge. If you put garbage in, you get a lot of garbage out if you don't do this. And in fact, you really need to be careful with the template if you're going to provide any information. So I would say the templates need to be over annotated so that you can select, pick and choose in the template the things that you feel safe to propagate. It's a little bizarre, you need to have more to do less, but you have to use this to make sure you propagate the right thing. Literature mining. In the perfect world, if I want to know about a protein X, I would just click a button, run a lot of literature mining tools, so it would get information from the papers, make a nice summary of what it is, and present me basically a replacement of the Swiss for that to be uh, you know, the state of the research. That would be agree. You know, you just say, uh, tell me everything about protein X or uniform, goes into the bed, gets a full test, read everything, summarize it to me. What do I need to choose for? Basically, and then also annotation. Sequence, yes, ETN, and so on, but not annotation. We fall from this. Very, very far from this. And, also, to help people develop those future tools, same in clean corpus of well annotated sequence, chicken and egg problem. If you want to develop good text mining tools, you need good summaries also to see what you should get. So you can apply tools to known articles and see what is the result of the summary and basically find your new tools. So just those two reasons are important enough to warrant the fact that we need annotation. Plus, to be honest, all of you which are here, it's fun to edit it. It's fun to be paid to read all of this literature to know what's happening and to be able to summarize things and offer this to the community. We have to go from push to push. In 20 years, we've been pulling information from literature. We take information in green papers. It's time to make sure that in the next 20 years, People will push information to databases. Because we want them to have the information automatically in the database. We should not be reading people. Think about the amount of time, money, which is spent of you all the researcher writing your paper, encapsulating your research in a nice article with an advertisement which is called an abstract. And said, we have to read your article, read back what you said. Try to translate it into data and go back and put back the data that you originally had into a form which is available by the computer. So you spend money doing this, we spend money doing this, who gains about that? Nobody. Billions of dollars and that is a charity that will be lost in doing this because people also are reading experiments which they are not capturing the database because people are not finding this. This is a shame, basically, when you think of it. So we're trying to help, but we're trying to help 
expectation. We're going to start something called adult protein to try to get people to directly see information to the proteins that they're studying. So we're going to adopt a protein, like you adopt a highway in the US and you clean it. It will use a type of weak linear time model interface and we will field test the yeast community. Why is yeast people? Because yeast people are well organized, say so work on a well defined protein. So the protein on which you work on is a gene which you say work on is a finite set which is well known and stable. And we have basically a list of all the yeast genes which are known to exist and so on. It's quite, if you want to set up this protein group, which will reward, it's easy to deal with compared to human or the stuff that whatever you want. We are also, but we are realists. We know a lot of people which have crisis. Mike Privet with Germ Online has told me a much more than I to try to get Germ Online on in their stock now, more or less try to do this. So people in SGP have a community education effort and you can see people, I mean, uh, really putting things on it. But we're going to try our best to get this done correctly. Now, great, great matter of fact, it's not an error. And that's story. What does it mean? There is a lot of high scientists with knowledge of molecular biology and computers which are approaching retirement age. It's a first time that people are into guitar which know to use computers and which know about sequence. A lot of them would like to play a role. So keep talking a lot, most of it, at least in Europe, when you're in retirement age. It's over, and you can maybe get a small bench thing somewhere if you're really lucky, but you're out of your lab. And maybe you want to do something and continue to have, I mean, go into the database. And we know that scientists that came to us and said, could we have once we reach our ambitious problem? And we thought that's a perfect idea. And we should try to offer them the tools necessary to go through this annotation process because we cannot treat them as full annotators. It takes time. We don't expect the same to spend a year to give our ABI or a year and a half in the city to learn everything. We need to be basically able to give them tutorials, to give them you know, short and early way of being from anywhere in the world able to use what exists on the web and tools that we develop so that they can do it. We have two tools which we think could maybe help for the democratization of sexual education. One already exists, we use it internally for already two years. It's called Adabel, a web-based protein synthesized platform. We speak about it for one million or more. We're developing a new architecture for Swiss crop. We need to develop it to add for this reason, this great great matter project. We've been developing it because we need an editor which will work with the RTF HTML format of Swiss crop and which is basically built for needs, not using Normal text editor which we have and which was much longer on the floor. This editor is being created, it's called Asterix, and it's possible that at one point we could use it for those people which, but we're not yet there, I and mean, we don't even have yet deployed Asterix to our editors, so don't come in and ask us when it's ready for external people. Please don't even try to ask us that. First, we have to use it, and later we can see we can do it to other people. I just, for those of you which are Asterix developer, I wanted to make a small video uh, calendar and just showing a fine to find illustration on Asterix. And what if it turned out, I found this, this is a book called Asterix Annotation. And it's, uh, I mean, a wishy can buy, so it's funny because uh, you have Asterix and Annotation. It's the same. And in the uh, book. Okay, I have it in one minute. It's platform you have a, of course a host on it and anyone uh, 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 with uh, anyone which is in charge of the uh, group uh, which have developed Annabelle is here to and if you have a question but anybody has this poster it's a way of those tools which I need to be used but in fact it can be in fact changed really easy in ways that anybody can use it to basically put sequence in and get the result of a full sequence analysis set on domain annotation, detail annotation, and so on. And not going to go into detail because this is not the place to go, but basically, user selects all the results, what they think is correct, and what they get is a feature table with all the different domains, the CRT lines, cross reference, and 
sets of keywords. So in the video of the device, we have a process of domain annotation, GTM, prediction, and a number of other things. Again, I have another bit of details on this. Okay. I love to put it in gray, gray matter, but what about the general scientists? We put in some parents to add up the proteins and grandparents to work, but what about the children? The young researchers, those which are really producing new knowledge. I think we need two carrots, a stick, and a lot of education. Okay, so carrots, we need to make sure that ranking agency really take into account when people say grants and facts that they are putting into a grant, that they want to submit data to knowledge base that they're going to take. An amount of time and money to do this. And that when the agency says this is good, and in fact, if you really don't have this, you should do it. And of course, all of the arming and promotion we carry out should make sure that when somebody shows a series that has spent time helping with the database, and I know of two three people in the students which have been in fact, I mean, discriminated because they were doing a lot of job for the database and some of the publishing, I mean, a number of papers that they should get to get promotion. And I think this is really unfair because for the community, they need much more than somebody who is just the paper. So those of you which are here, you know who they are. And the stick is to get journal editors to refuse to accept the publisher paper with the data in it to be submitted to relevant knowledge resources. What about education? I think everyone should be concerned. So awareness of the content usage of knowledge resources are prerequisites to do really serious research. And of course, MNET, EPI, CNN, CPI, National School of Genetics in Japan should all have some outreach involved. MNET is an outreach program and also should do continue what they're doing and do more. And the database provider should do a lot more things. Okay, that's the last part. Funny issues. One thing which is very important is that it's a pain, I mean, it's really a, uh, a work which is aligned to what middle aged companies, the really sense that people are very easy to put a database. I mean, you can see the work of Spike and middle aged of the companies in the media in France in the 18th, 17th, 18th century, and the Oxford English Dictionary in the 19th century. It's really a lot of work, and we need to really love it to get more funding. The problem is it's difficult to get funding, it's a long term process, it's not prestigious, and it's not cheap. Of course, when you see the genome, you can make it, you can ask Clinton and Blair to make an announcement, you could see the genome. You don't need to do an announcement on the database, and of course, the database can get into trouble. Swiss frauds, other databases, and so on, as we know, are in trouble. So, the uh, Indian uh, land database and so on. And it's not only database which are trouble. Service group, so HMP Resource Center, so Info Biogenic Center is closing down. So, this is a lot of problems. So, my proposition is that we create a new task that each grant which has a high throughput data producing project will be obliged to set aside a predefined percentage of the grant money. To have over part of the cost of storing and managing and producing the data. All this money will be distributed is not really to define and even less to implement. And of course, the priority is to use this tax as a financial tool to have to fund the data repository. Because it's a biodata art, tax for biomedical data archives. Now I'm going to speak about that in I, I, uh, ISMG and propose a practical scheme uh, so it's a session of volunteers in bioinformatics and to try to propose to make a concrete proposal. I will skip the six observations of data maser because I basically have, according to my time, I'm too limited to say that I call it recent one. But, uh, well, no, it has to be limited, okay? So, this is taking six days to take into account when you build the database. Your task will be much more complex and far bigger than you could ever tell you to do. If it's useful and successful, you will have to spend all your work on the database. Don't think that you will be able to quit working on it. You will always wonder why people do not adhere to standardization, to guidelines, and so on, which will simplify your life and their life. You will have to always try to get money, that's easy to know. And of course, 
also would be told far more than you should do in the normal world and what you're doing right. That's normal. And then he said, he said, well, and, but so, take a message. It's nice. It's how useful it is. How much of those products really lose its importance? So, I will finish by this slide. It's a bit tacky, but quite so scary. It's this protein spot like this. So, it's real. We all of the names of people with numbers like Alan Taxi. Thank you.